And uh, here is another story and another example. Why do we have a financial disbalance as we have it right now? Since the implementation of uh, new model, there were price caps or cost limitations introduced. And they were the one introduced by the regulators and it was something new for all the market players and for our company as well. In order not to have a price shocks or rapid increase of the, of the prices, price caps were implemented for a period of nine months. We believe that was a wise decision at the start of a new market, but Unfortunately, we still have those price caps, and uh, the availability of those price caps artificially produces the problems that we have right now. Let me give you an example. Should you take a look at the situation from the financial standpoint and the work of the energy generating companies in Europe, we'll have that some days. Uh, last year, we had a warm winter, we had a lot of coal. We had a lot of capital frozen in the form of coal on the warehouses. This year we have a different situation with the weather and I don't think that anyone could guess what the weather would be like next year. The air temperature has a great impact on the balance of production and consumption of electricity. How it operates in Europe, whenever there is a cold weather in winter, then they start operating with the gas for one day or two days, but using a gas at uh, the electricity outage or the need to increase the outage, even in the lack of coal for one day, for two days or three days, it's much better from the financial standpoint than to stockpile two million tons of coal at the warehouse. This is the economic laws and they are fairly understandable to everyone. And what is the situation in our case? Let me give you an absolutely clear example. If we switch off, switch on the gas units, uh, then the uh, price caps in Ukraine would allow to uh, well, to have an income of 50 euros per one megawatt hour. So, if we have a private or a public company, would it be rationally? Do they have any stimulus to switch on the gas units whenever their cost is covered by 50 or 70 percent? We have learned this lesson in Luhansk station one year ago. Everyone remembered when there was problems with coal supplies from Russian Federation to the Luhansk station, and you won't be able to transport coal through different routes. So we had to operate for a couple of months using the gas. So initially we had an agreement, that is the public service obligation and agreement. We had to operate uh, ineffectively and efficiently, although to provide the electricity to the region. And the availability of the price caps forced us to operate without any income, but with losses of hundreds of millions of hryvnia and there was an agreement with the government that those losses will be compensated a year has passed and nothing was compensated and now we have a debt to uh, not us we have penalties we have to try to search for resources and now many of the energy generating companies learned the experience of DTAC in Luhansk and they are not willing to switch on the uh, electricity production units operating on gas and now they're simply not switching on those gas units. This is just to support my statement on the deficit of uh, the energy capacities. We don't have any deficit in the energy production capacities. We have more than enough capacities to cover the needs 
of Ukraine and we absolutely have enough capacities not to import the electricity. Although the reasons that we'll be talking about today have resulted the deficit of energy capacities. And now some of the politicians tell that we have a deficit in energy production capacities, let's import electricity from Russia and Belarus. This is not true. Now, what is the result of disbalance in the market price? which is regulated by the price caps and uh, the uh, true cost and the original cost. Take a look at the 2019-2020, and uh, we have received the data that we received from the regulator, and here is the market price. You can work uh, at a price that is less than the fixed cost for a certain period of time, but when you're doing that for a second year already, we can already see the consequences, and the consequences are the total losses on the part of all the energy-generating companies. You can talk to Energonautum, you can talk to TPPs, you can talk to uh, PSPPs, and everyone would tell that they have received losses as the result of 2020. Losses because the fixed cost bel is below the market price. And this resulted in a significant problems with the payments, plus the tariff statement by Ukrainergo to fund the public service obligation, the failure to make certain decisions on the part of the NURC, the failure to make additional payments from the budget. This has resulted in the total that's an amount of 50 billion Ukrainian hryvnia. And over the whole period of uh, operation of the previous market, we had uh, around 27 billion uh, Ukrainian hryvnia in debt, but that is over the whole years of operation of the old market, uh, considering the work on the temporary un uncontrolled areas. Now we have an absolutely different situation. We have a losses and debts in the amount of over 50 billion Ukrainian hryvnia for just a year and a half. We have to provide uh, additional uh, money to uh, the uh, state-owned mines. This is the diagnosis, and it clearly shows how the model of uh, market works. Of course, we can say, okay, these are the one who, who should be blamed for that. But let's try to look at the current situation in the market and then nominate the guilty one in order to justify the lack of professionalism on the part of some individuals.